Listen, okay, I'm going to give you a couple of names here. Okay. And I would like you to give me a, a description or an anecdote. You're talking verbal Rorschach, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, verbal, verbal, schmerbal. Go ahead. People you might have worked with or people you admired or whatever. Right. Red Skelton. Brilliant, brilliant clown. Johnny Carson. Brilliant monologist. Dinah Shore. Wonderful singer. Marty Scorsese. Brilliant director, too short. Robert De Niro. One of the best actors that ever lived. Sammy Davis Jr. One of the nicest Jews I ever met. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. One of the nicest Gentiles I ever met. Most generous, most giving, most loving man I ever met in my life. Hal Wallace. A putz. <laughs> Norman Turog. Norman Turog was one of my first directors. He taught me a great deal. He was a good director. John Rich. If John Rich didn't have so many personal problems, he'd be a wonderful professional. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Lawford. Peter Lawford was uh, Harry Horship. I don't know if you're going to use that, but that was him. You know, he'd have the cufflinks and the ascot, and he was always playing Harry London. <laughs> a former NBC program chief, Norman Blackburn. Oh, he was terrific. Norman Blackburn was the NBC exec when Dean and I were first doing NBC radio. Abby Greshler. Oh, God, I hate to speak of the dead, but he was dead when he represented us. <laughs> you remember Larry Gelbart saw Greshler's wife walking down Fifth Avenue, he walked over to her and said, you have my condolences, and he was standing next to her. <laughs> Dick Stabile. Oh, he was my musical director and my conductor. And a lovely man. Great musician. One of the best uh, on the alto sax that ever lived. Jack Keller. Oh, my teacher about when I, when I, I was paying him a lot of money as my press agent. He was represent, representing George Evans in New York. And I went to him one day and I said, hey, I'm paying you a lot of money. Get my name in the papers. He said, no, no, no. You're paying me a lot of money to keep your name out of the paper. <laughs> he said, that's what you're paying me for. Paul Cohen. Paul Cohen was the man who asked me if it was a viable idea to do a telethon for the dystrophic child. Mm hmm Ed McMahon. Oh, God. Well, that's, you know, that's a pussycat. He's there for you whenever you want him. He's, 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 a, he's a loyal, staunch friend. And the beauty of Ed McMahon is that he personifies Webster's definition of friend, which is one who holds a personal regard for another. That's Ed McMahon. Lou Wasserman. Good businessman, ran MCA. He was, uh, I think he was trained with the SS, but he was, he was very, he did nice work, Lou Wasserman. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, David Sarnoff. David Sonoff, you mean General Sonoff? General, Oh, yes. he was super. What a nice man he was. And when I met uh, General Sonoff, David and Bobby were little kids. They were like a few years younger than I, but that's how far back. I mean, 1947, mm -hmm. he was really the top dog at NBC. Uh, Bobby Sonoff. Bobby's a wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. He married an opera singer that I had worked with. I don't remember her name wonderful singer, and uh, we spent Anna some time Maffo. in Cannes to get, yeah, uh, Anna Maffo, Maffo. right. Yes. Yep, exactly. and did he Maffo Anna Maffo. And Tommy <laughs> Sarnoff, as long as we're mentioning Tommy him. Sarnoff's a wonderful old friend. Yes. And a gentleman by the name of Irving Kay. Ah, my nanny. Irving Kay was with me for 58 years. We put him to rest a couple of years ago. But the day he came into the hotel, the Holland Hotel in New York, my mom and dad were staying there with me. And he walked in and my dad said, Jerry's got a gig in Toronto, but he's 14 years old. So by law, we have to have someone go with him, a chaperone. He has to have a guardian. He said, can you, uh, would you go? Irving said, you got it. He said, you want to pack? And he pulls socks out of this pocket and a toothbrush out. He says, I'm ready. And he's been, he was with me 58 years. Yes, I remember him. Yeah, he was fun.
Is there anybody else you want to talk about that we, that we left out? Well, Michael DeBakey has saved my life five times. And this last trip, when I went down there, he said, you got four left, you better take care of them. He saved me when I was a dope addict, cleaned me out, set me straight. Then I had open heart surgery, saved my life then. Then I had prostate cancer, and he took care of that business and straightened me up. After that, I had viral meningitis where I got dangerously near death and he saved my life. And uh, just uh, a month and a half ago, he did it for the fifth time when they pronounced me full-blown diabetic. So that's why I had to eat at a certain hour before. So I'm, uh, I'm watching it and uh, I don't think that Michael saving my life five times would change what I'm about to say. When I'm with him, I feel like I'm in the presence of God. And I just wish that everybody had an opportunity to feel that way about someone in their life. Because it enriches your life. And he's a great friend. And I think a lot of his good stuff has rubbed off. At least I'd like to think so.